Iron deficiency anemia is a type of microcytic anemia and uh, we know that uh, there are three or four types of microcytic anemia. The first one is iron deficiency anemia, then we have thalassemia, sideroblastic anemia and sometimes anemia of chronic disorder also uh, examples of microcytic anemia. But in today's topic, uh, we are going to discuss iron deficiency anemia and its name indicate that in this anemia, the deficiency of iron occur that why we have low level of hemoglobin how it's occurred and what is the purpose behind uh, iron deficiency anemia so we will discuss now in very detail iron is required for the synthesis of normal heme uh, of uh, hemoglobin and uh, its deficiency leads to decrease erythropoiesis and uh, finally we have anemia so iron deficiency anemia which is commonly known as IDA is the most common nutritional disorder in the world and uh, whenever we are talking about the distribution of iron so iron is an essential metal present in the human body and uh, the total body iron content is divided into functional and storage compartment and uh, it's uh, uh, it's different in men and women and even it's different in uh, uh, children as well so iron in the body is extensively recycled uh, between the functional and uh, storage pool so here we can uh, look toward this picture that this is a different pool hemoglobin myoglobin ferritin and hemocytin these are different pool we have in the body like uh, hemoglobin red blood cells contain hemoglobin muscles contain myoglobin and iron is stored in two different form that are ferritin and hemocytin and when we have looked toward here so these are the different normal values in men and in female as well uh, in milligram per deciliter so the iron metabolism now and uh, iron uh, whenever we are discussing the metabolism of uh, iron so we can uh, discuss it uh, like what is the function of iron uh, where it's stored and which form it's stored these are the two uh, main compartments so functionally uh, we know that approximately 80 percent of the functional iron is present in the hemoglobin and uh, the remaining functional iron is found in the uh, myoglobin and iron containing enzyme uh, like catalase cytochromes and even peroxidases and uh, whenever we are talking about its storage so we have to know that uh, iron is stored in two forms one is called ferritin and the other one is hemocedrin so the storage pool contains 15 to 20 percent of total body iron and uh, free iron is highly toxic because it can result in tissue damage due to its capacity to form free radicals and we can see this type of problem in thalassemia as well because there in thalassemia measure we have a lot of iron uh, which is freely uh, freely moved and can stored in different parts of the body so we have problem over there therefore iron is uh, bound to protein and stored in the body in two uh, forms uh, two different uh, their name are ferritin and hemocydrin and uh, the storage iron can be readily mobilized whenever there is increased in requirements of iron uh, as may occur after blood loss and uh, two-thirds of the iron is stored as ferritin uh, while one-third as hemocydrin Ferritin is a protein iron complex uh, and it's mostly found in all tissue but uh, particularly it can found in liver, it's found in spleen, it's uh, present in bone marrow and it's also found in skeletal muscles as well. Um, very small amount of ferritin circulates in the serum and uh, the values normally being found uh, is 15 to 300 microgram per liter. Uh, and uh, one should uh, one thing should know that uh, the serum ferritin level reflects the iron stores uh, and uh, serum ferritin level is usually very low that is uh, 12 microgram per liter in iron deficiency anemia it can also high uh, but uh, in some condition associated with iron overload and uh, uh, may observe that its count become uh, its normal value become 5000 microgram per liter 
uh, ferritin is water soluble and uh, remember that it's not visible by light microscopy other storage form of iron is uh, hemosiderin and uh, basically hemosiderin is an aggregate of iron and protein which is found in the reticular endothelial cells of bone marrow uh, spleen and uh, even in liver uh, hemosiderin appear as a golden yellow granules in the cytoplasm of the cell uh, whenever it's stained with a routine uh, hemotoxylene and eucine and uh, when it's treated with Persian blue or pearl stains hemosiderin takes a blue black color due to the iron reacting with potassium ferrocyanide of pearl stain and uh, in iron overload most of the iron is stored in the cells as hemosiderin so it's basically the difference between ferritin and hemosiderin is that uh, serum ferritin levels reflect iron store where hemosiderin is an aggregate of iron protein which is found in the reticular endothelial cell both can found in liver both are present in the spleen and bone marrow and in, in the liver as well where uh, ferritin is water soluble and uh, ferritin uh, we cannot see ferritin on the light microscopy where we can see uh, hemosiderin on persian blue or pearl stand as well the daily requirements in adult male is 5 to 10 milligram per day and in uh, females uh, it's slightly high that is uh, 20 milligram per day and uh, it's different in different ages according to the iron recommended uh, dietary intake uh, you can see this chart that uh, uh, birth to six months a uh, very low level of iron very low amount of iron is required that is 0.27 milligram uh, but uh, if you uh, see that uh, uh, in the age of 51 or more than 51 year uh, the iron intake is 8 milligram per day and uh, both in male and female uh, there is some variation uh, like uh, female also has menstrual cycle and uh, it also have pregnancies so the requirement uh, for female is rather more than the male and uh, if you look toward the chart 7 to 12 months it's 11 milligram both in male and female then 1 to 3 years 7 milligram it's the same uh, 4 to 8 years 10 milligram both are the same then 9 to 13 years uh, both are still the same now from 14 to 18 years male required 11 milligram while female required 15 milligram it's mean that during this age the female start their menstrual cycle and the requirement for the female is higher than the male and uh, then in the age of 19 to 50 years male are still required 8 to 15 milligram uh, per day but the female have more dietary intake and uh, there are some uh, there are consequences uh, or there are uh, problems in the female like uh, they have pregnancies they have uh, menstrual cycle so the requirements is become more and more here and it's here we have 18 milligram per day and uh, then after the uh, whenever the menstrual cycle becomes stopped so again the amount or the dietary intake become low with the passage of time so this is a very important chart uh, regarding exam or regarding uh, general um, aspect while uh, discussing the etiology of ida so uh, iron deficiency anemia develops when there is an inadequate amount of iron for hemoglobin synthesis and uh, what are the causes uh, so it might be dietary deficiency increased iron demand malabsorption of iron and uh, also chronic blood loss and uh, if you look toward the dietary deficiency so it's mostly occur in the underdeveloped countries especially during uh, infancy and uh, childhood because iron content of milk is very low and uh, increased iron demand so the demand of iron is increased in the growth phase of early childhood and uh, during pregnancy as we have discussed the previous chart so during uh, pregnancy and childhood the demand of iron increase slowly and gradually so dietary iron supplements are essential during these times and uh, uh, if diet is deficient of iron it cannot provide the requirements amount of 
iron and uh, leads to iron deficiency anemia then the third one is uh, malabsorption of iron and uh, malabsorption of iron may occur in severe generalized malabsorption states such as celiac disease and uh, tropical sprue uh, it also occur after gastrectomy because gastric acid is necessary for the uh, iron absorption So, uh, chronic blood loss uh, may occur because of the two different uh, um, problems and uh, the first one is excessive menstrual blood loss and the other one is chronic blood loss from a gastrointestinal tract. So, excessive menstrual blood loss is because of uh, hormonal imbalance or uh, dysfunction of the ovaries. Uh, similarly, uh, if there is uh, some uterine fibroid, uh, there is possibility of menstrual blood loss. Uh, if there is adenomyosis, uh, there is possibility. And uh, similarly, if uh, you have some intrauterine devices, so uh, there is excessive menstrual blood loss because of that devices. Or uh, sometime uh, we have seen that uh, the excessive blood loss may also occur in some uh, complications in pregnancies and uh, some sort of cancer also have excessive menstrual blood loss so whenever the blood loss is um, the blood is lost in excessive manner so there, there might be a uh, deficiency of uh, iron and it may cause iron deficiency anemia where now, on the other hand, chronic blood loss from GIT, uh, for example, uh, if there is some hookworm infection or uh, peptic ulcer or uh, chronic aspirin ingestion or uh, es esophageal viruses or hemorrhoids and uh, even in tumor, uh, also chronic blood loss from GIT can uh, occur. So these are the iron sources and uh, the good iron source are meat, uh, especially red meat, uh, liver, fish, eggs, uh, beans, uh, similarly green leafy vegetables uh, like uh, spinach, uh, dry fruits like uh, apricots etc. And uh, these, uh, these are the good uh, iron source and uh, remember that uh, milk is a poor source of iron, uh, milk is not a good source of iron. And uh, finally, all iron absorption. On iron absorption, I have uploaded uh, a video uh, in uh, my playlist. Uh, so you can open my YouTube channel, open the playlist, and there uh, you will find two videos: iron deficiency in the lecture one and lecture two. So iron absorption is uh, is discussed in detail uh, over there, and uh, you can watch that video. So thank you very much for watching, and uh, stay tuned with me. Uh, inshallah, we we will uh, be back with another video in uh, this week so thank you very much for listening